Charlie Munger is a well-known personality in finance, most notably as vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's international company. His insights on investing and life, which he frequently shares in lectures and writings, have earned him recognition in both the financial and intellectual circles. Let's discover. Charles Thomas Munger was an American businessman, investor, and philanthropist. He was the vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's conglomerate, and Buffett described Munger as his closest colleague and right-hand man. From 1984 to 2011, Munger served as chairman of Wesco Financial Corporation. Charles Thomas Munger was born on January 1, 1924 in Omaha, Nebraska to Florence Tutti and Alfred Case Munger, an attorney. Munger died in a hospital in Santa Barbara, California on November 28, 2023 at the age of 99, 34 days shy of his 100th birthday. Warren Buffett remarked in a statement after his death that Berkshire Hathaway couldn't have been built to its present status without Charlie's inspiration, wisdom, and participation. Appreciate it when folks realize that they were completely foolish. I know I'll do better if I focus on my mistakes. This is an excellent trick to learn. The remarks are delivered in the distinctive voice of Charlie Munger, the 97-year-old half of the legendary Buffett Munger pair that heads Berkshire Hathaway, the world's largest investing corporation. As you can see, Munger doesn't speak like a dignified senior statesman in the business sector. As a result, what he says is genuinely engaging and valuable, as opposed to the bland, meaningless language that most well-known business people use. This business of recognizing and acknowledging faults is a recurring issue for Buffett and Munger. This error theme is more than just words. While most business people never admit mistakes, these two are nearly eager to do so, with their most serious issue being a decades-long technological difficulty. Historically, they did poorly when investing in IBM and bought Apple late, but they have since done extremely well. Worse, Buffett and Munger have recognized one of their worst mistakes was not purchasing Google. Back around 2004, their own insurance company benefited greatly from Google's then-new advertising service. They could see that this was something amazing. They observed, discussed, and realized that Google was a firm with enormous potential, but they never invested in it. We just sat there sucking our thumbs, Munger remarked of not investing in Google. Professional investment managers and advisors, of course, do not and cannot do this. In most workplaces, admitting you were incorrect, as these two did, would be equivalent to resigning. However, let's ignore what your fund manager or investment advisor does or doesn't do. Individuals must become more proactive and enthusiastic about admitting their faults. That's because acknowledging mistakes is more than simply a masochistic self-purification ritual. It directly contributes to boosting the profits we generate from our investments and helping us become better investors. How does it do this? Munger advised against forgetting mistakes when attempting to develop cognition. Why not celebrate stupidities? This is equivalent in Berkshire's history of technology investments. For a long time, Berkshire didn't invest in technology because Buffett and Munger didn't believe they understood it well enough. This was the correct mindset to have during the illogical late 1990s boom and subsequent bust in technology. However, they soon understood that technology had changed into the dominating consumer sector and they should have paid attention from the moment Google caught their eye in 2004. Many investors, regardless of size, would have justified their actions and said that they were the correct thing to do. However, Buffett and Munger didn't do this. They not only admitted their mistake to themselves, but they also made amends by heavily investing in Apple. Furthermore, at their annual shareholders meeting, they freely apologized to the mistake and answered questions about it. As a result, their company and its shareholders made more profitable investments. Of course, as is typical of Munger's remarks, these are life lessons rather than investment teachings. Everyone makes mistakes, and most of us struggle to admit when we're wrong. Every day, you see what is going on in the world around you. However, we can quietly admit and correct our investment blunders. We can not only correct problems, but also ensure that we learn from them, paving the road for future higher returns. Consider the widespread market panic that occurred in March and April of last year. Was this an error? It certainly didn't appear that way at the time. The better question is, what did we learn from this? Charlie grew up in a modern Midwestern town in the United States. 
Just as he was about to graduate from the University of Michigan, Pearl Harbor was bombed. When the United States declared war, he dropped out to join the U.S. Army Air Corps. It was 1943, and the Army's little division was reorganized as the United States Air Force. Munger became an officer, was stationed in Alaska, and met Nancy Higgins during training. The couple started dating and married shortly after. Years went slowly, accompanied by murder, ruin, and the craziness of war. The war's end provided relief, but it also left Charlie with a nagging question, what next? The solution for him was to imagine bigger things. Charlie defied convention by enrolling in advanced graduate classes at Caltech rather than finishing his undergraduate degree first. Once he felt confident enough, he used his graduate-level courses to get admission to Harvard Law School, where he graduated with honors. In the service, he learned to play cards, and at Harvard, the habit became more sophisticated and professional as he focused on a broader gambling arena, the stock market. He was 29 years old, and everything seemed to be going well until now. But that was not to last long. After eight years of marriage and three children, his marriage failed and he divorced. Divorce had a strong social stigma at the time and it dealt Munger his first blow. His wife received practically everything from the breakup, including the house. Charlie relocated to dreadful bachelor digs and drove an awful yellow Pontiac with a bad repaint. He, on the other hand, mustered all of his courage and worked tirelessly all week to recoup the money lost during the divorce proceedings. On Saturdays, going to the zoo with the kids was designed to help him forget about his weariness and separation. This was only the beginning. Life would continue to put him to the test. A year later, his eight-year-old son Teddy developed leukemia for which there was no therapy or medical insurance at the time. Charlie had no health insurance, so he had to pay for everything out of himself. Every day, he would take Teddy to the hospital for checkups while also caring for his other two children and practicing law. Those 11 months were the toughest as he saw his kid deteriorate and die. According to his friend Rick Guerin, Charlie would go to the hospital when his kid was in bed and slowly dying, hold him for a while, and then go out walking the streets of Pasadena crying. Teddy passed away at the tender age of nine, leaving him distraught. At this point in his life, with everything going against him, a failed marriage, financial ruin, the loss of his son, it would have been tempting to abandon everything and turn to vices like alcohol and drugs as so many people around him had done so at the time. But Charlie was not that man and he persevered. Later, he reflected on the inner anguish he could have succumbed to, saying, Generally speaking, envy, wrath, retribution and self-pity are terrible habits of thought. Self-pity can lead to paranoia, which is one of the most difficult things to overcome. You don't want to fall into self-pity. Self-pity will not help the situation. Back in California, Charlie left his job to start his own real estate legal practice. It wouldn't be long before he stopped practicing law totally and concentrated on financial management. As he honed his investing talent and combined his love with work, his investments began to generate an annual return of 20% or more, which was four times the average market rate at the time. Ambition raged within him, but misfortune, his persistent companion, struck again shortly after. He returned to investment, eager to prove his investor mettle and keeping the underdog spirit alive. As he improved his game, he learned from his earlier mistakes to remain cool, cautious, and take calculated, forward-thinking chances. Throughout this time, his bond with the eccentric Midwestern investor persisted. Charlie, the diligent learner, gradually mastered his investing talents to the point where he became the quirky investor's financial advisor. As they began investing together, they initially purchased stock in a textile company which began to falter. The two doubled down on finding and investing in other potential firms, keeping the name of the defunct textile industry for their holding company Berkshire Hathaway. We'll return with additional details and videos. Please remember to like the video if you thought it was informative and helpful. Also, leave your comments, subscribe to our channel, and do check back for more thought-provoking videos.